making a Stuart model steam plant part 4, working on one of the old Stuart S50 steam engines, with a similar problem to the Stuart 10V, but this job was more difficult to do. And just in case you're wondering what I mean by one of the old Stuart S50 steam engines, the customer for whom I'm building the steam plant is sending me a lot of parts and I basically pick the best for him and I can keep the rest. There's still one S50 steam engine to arrive, I haven't seen that yet, I just hope it's better than this one. If you're following this series, the Stuart 10V is the one that I'm going to use in the plant. This was built by the customer. This one is very old and very worn. I can tell that it's quite worn by watching it run. So how do I know it's an old one? Because it has a gunmetal cylinder. The later S50 models had a cast iron cylinder and steam chest. Many years ago, around the time that I bought my Smart and Brown lathe, I also bought some Stuart models casting sets. One of them was an S50, and I had a good look at it and thought to myself, I can build this in a day. And I also set myself the task, just for fun, of building it in a day without using anything other than a three-jaw chuck, no four-jaw chucks for turning the cylinder. Looking at this model in detail, I think it was originally quite well made, and I'm sure I can get it to run OK. This video shows one particular problem I came across and how I fixed it. The valve timing is a little bit retarded, but there's a big problem. I can't change it. Look at the state of the screw that holds the eccentric sheave to the crankshaft. To take it apart, I need to remove the crankshaft, starting with the flywheel, but the grub screw is also broken on this one. Luckily, it wasn't very tight, and I managed to loosen it with my small pair of pliers and remove it. It takes a while and a bit of patience, but eventually, as you can see, the broken grub screw is discarded. For the next part of the job, I'm removing the crank pin. This wasn't very tight, and I know the screwdriver's too small, so don't bother writing in to tell me. Because the crank pin was so loose, I removed it without marking the screw slot. What I'm going to try and do is remove the broken grub screw in the eccentric sheave. In exactly the same way as you've just seen me remove the broken grub screw in the flywheel. But alas, even with my pair of pliers, this is not going to work. This broken slot-headed grub screw is a very tight fit in the hole. I know, I'll use a different pair of pliers. But even with this larger pair of pliers, the grub screw refused to move. Time to call in the cavalry and heavy artillery. I'm using a Proxon motor tool fitted with a diamond cutter. I'm not trying to cut a slot in what's left of this grub screw. I'm trying to just flatten it off so then I can drill it out. Controlling the diamond cutter is difficult and it did make some marks on the eccentric sheave. This clip shows what was left of the grub screw once I drilled it out using a twist drill in the Proxon motor tool. Here I'm cleaning up the eccentric sheave to remove any marks. It was already badly marked anyway, somebody had had a pair of pliers on this area. With the crankweb machine this way, it cannot be withdrawn from the bed of the engine. The clip on screen is definitely not the way to do this job. Do not use a pair of pliers on the end of the crankshaft. I fitted the end of the crankshaft into the three-jaw chuck of my Myford lathe, and then I unscrewed the crankweb. Notice it is a left-hand thread. You can easily be fooled by this, because undoing it feels like you're tightening it. Once I removed the crank web, it was a very simple job to slide out the crankshaft. Am I going to make a new crankshaft? No, I do not have any left hand thread dies. To remove the marks around the edge of the crank web, caused by previous attempts at removal and my attempt at removing it with a pipe wrench, I definitely don't recommend doing it this way. Don't forget it's a left hand thread. So the crank web just spins off the crankshaft when the tool touches it. So how did I do it? As you can see, it's been machined. Well, I ran the lathe in reverse, but I didn't turn the tool over. There was just enough of the carbide tip to clean the outer part of the crankweb. I just needed to remove the raggy edges, which I did first of all with a needle file. Being very careful not to catch it in the chuck. I then cleaned up the rest of the crankweb using some wet or dry sandpaper. Health and safety warning, this can be dangerous. Notice that I've folded the wet or dry sandpaper over many times, so it's like a pad. I would never use a single sheet. In this clip, I'm removing the pin that holds the valve rod 
to the valve fork. This pin was a really good fit in the hole, almost perfect. Before I go any further, I'm giving the engine a really good clean around the crankshaft area, mainly because it's very oily and grimy, and there's probably some metal particles in this area from the grinding of the old grub screw. By the way, S50 steam engines do not have split bearings, and also the bolts are usually cast in, but someone's taken the trouble to file off the old bolts and fit proper ones, although they don't do anything, other than go rusty. Before refitting the eccentric strap and the eccentric sheave, I think I'm going to give it a really good clean up. And now this is what it looks like after being on the polishing spindle for a while. In exactly the same way as I did with the double 10 V job, I'm re-threading the hole in the eccentric sheave 6BA, so I can use a 6BA Allen head grub screw. I refitted the crank web to the crank shaft. There's a bit of play in the bearings, but you would expect that this is a very old engine. And for something I cannot explain, the Stuart model S50 engine seems to run quite well, even when the main bearings are worn. Very strange. I don't know what the original grub screw thread was in this flywheel, but now it's 5BA. I didn't have any 5BA grub screws, so I used an ordinary bolt to clamp it to the crankshaft. Now it's time to give the engine a thorough going over with the oil can. The gland nut on the steam chest was blowing badly, so I loosened it and put a drop of oil in there first before fitting a short length of Teflon coated yarn. When gland packing, I have a bit of advice. First of all, put the gland packing in place so that the tail, the last bit that goes in, is in the same direction as the thread. And also, when you re-tighten the gland nut on an S50, do not over-tighten it. The gland packing is strong enough to destroy the actual threaded gland. How do I know this? Because I've done exactly that in the past. Only once. With the engine fully back together, it's time to see if it works. In this clip, I'm applying some oil to the piston rod gland to see whether that's leaking, and it isn't. To say there's so much play in the small end on the crosshead, the engine runs very well, and it's surprisingly powerful. I need to make a slight adjustment. There is a shallow hole drilled in the crankshaft, and the idea of that is that the grub screw fits into the hole. I'm not using a grub screw, but it's the same principle. The tip of this bolt now goes into the hole, and now the flywheel is very well secured to the crankshaft. When I turn over the engine with the air supply cut off, there is some compression. But when I admit some compressed air to the steam chest and turn over the engine manually, I do notice that the timing is very retarded. It runs okay, but the timing is not right. It's dotted. It's going da 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 Not quite like that, but similar to that. It's not even. Unfortunately, on this engine, the builder built it so that there was also a very shallow hole into which the grub screw of the eccentric fits so it's really difficult to adjust it. I could rotate the crankshaft and make the engine go backwards, but that's not possible on this S50. It's a left-hand thread, and you saw what happened in the lathe. Luckily, the position of the eccentric seems okay. I think the problem is in the valve chest. The valve is not quite in the right place. I took out the small bolt that holds the eccentric rod to the valve rod, and then I rotated the valve rod and turned it in a couple of turns and refitted the eccentric rod. And now the engine is running much better. In this clip I'm seeing how much power it has. I'm not feeding it with much air at all, maybe 30 pounds per square inch, and even by gripping the crankshaft it's very difficult to stop the engine. Obviously, when I grip the outer part of the flywheel, I can stop it. But I thought I would take this opportunity of having some power to clean up the outer edge of the flywheel using some Scotch-Brite. And although the engine slows down, it's not really labouring, it's driving quite well. This would easily drive a generator. It's time for me to go, so I'd just like to wish you the best of health. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. I'll leave the video with the engine running to the end.
please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.